By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back for the very last time, sadly, in Conegliani. We're still here with the Venetia Lines. This is the day two finals and day two is called Lines Day and it's all about the flavor. So these are the two flavor decks uh, that got the furthest in the tournament. They're now here in the finals, gonna battle for that Venetia line. It's really nice altar of a Savannah lines, I believe. But more about that later. For now, the decks, we're seeing a green red in the hands of Frenchman Sebastian. It is a um, Greta's speech deck and it's kind of about the destruction of the earth. And uh, it's a pretty cool deck and a lovely deck photo, but more about that later. And he's playing against American player Kevin and Kevin is playing a mono black zombies deck and he's written a whole story about it. I think I'm gonna post the story in the comment section below. So you can just check that out if you wanna read the story behind his deck. So both decks are very flavorful and are going mano in mano here in the finals. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, first a quick word from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, we are back and ready to jump into the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of the player on the left, Kevin, and he's playing Mono Black Zombies. I've called it Zombie Quest. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Kevin. So as you can see, obviously it's a really like thematic zombie deck, right? We only see one zombie master, but we see a lot of zombies. So Walking Dead now is a zombie as well. We also see four escape zombies. I love that, the Tutu Vanilla, classic from Alpha. And we also see a three times the Fallen. Now the Fallen is quite an interesting creature because once it is dealt damage, then every single turn your opponent is going to take a damage from the Fallen. So I always think the Fallen Maybe you should see a little bit more play in those zombie decks. You don't see it that often, and uh, it is a zombie now. So, I mean, start boarding that card in. It's pretty sweet. I also like it that he's uh, included Darkness, kind of the Black Fog. That's kind of a surprise. I actually played against Kevin at this tournament, and he won with Darkness. I thought I had him. He played Darkness, and on the crackback, he killed me. Um, that was a really good play, Kevin, by the way. Another card that's really strong in this deck is Pestilence. Like Pestilence, if you don't have an answer to that, and of course you've got your regenerating zombies, can be quite strong in this deck. Um, yeah, and besides that, I mean, this is just a fun brew, right? But I guess because you've got a lot of creatures together with the Zombie Master and with the Bad Moons, it can be pretty strong, right? Uh, we also see Icy Manipulator combined with Howling Mines. That can really work well. Remember, Howling Mine is one of the two artifacts that you can shut down by tapping it. The other one is the Winter Orb. So you can tap down the Howling Mine with your Ice Manipulator and then your opponent doesn't draw that extra card. But when it's your turn, untap, upkeep, draw, you know. So your Howling Mine is then being untapped again and you draw two cards. After that, you tap it again with your Icy. Your opponent only draws one card and that can be a huge advantage, especially in this whole like thematic tournament, right? Where it's all about theme and flavor. All of a sudden, you've got card draw going on and that's, of course, really, really strong. Now, I do think this is going to be a really tough matchup for Kevin because his opponent, Sebastian, is playing with a lot of creature removal. And, you know, that's not what you want to see when you're uh, the zombie player. And especially there's one card from Arabian Nights that he's playing with that's going to be really tough. And that's called Drop of Honey. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Sebastian. And here we see the deck of Sebastian. So this deck, of course, look at that deck photo. It's pretty cool. It's an hourglass kind of hinting that the time that we have here on Earth is almost over because, of course, we're neglecting it. We're destroying it. And that's really what this deck photo is all about, right? You see at the top there, respect your mother's Earth with, you know, the forests. We see, you know, the lands. It looks very lush and green. Then we see the human greed in the form of uh, the drop of honey. Then we see Gaia's Rebellion, we've got the Living Plane, we see Titania's song kind of as a Greta speech to try to make sure that we stop destroying our Earth. And then the Wrath starts, right? We keep 
destroying the earth and the planet. We've got the wrath of the skies, the wrath of the earth, the vengeful eruption going on. So we've got a lot of burn in this deck. We've got a lot of like earthquakes going on. And then at the end, if we continue like over overusing our earth, you know, what's going to happen is that all that remains and we see those mazes of if, those deserts, like there's nothing left. And then you all can go search for another planet now. Good luck. And we see that there at the bottom. Uh, I think the no me that with the K needs to be a now without the K. I think that that's what Sebastian means. And of course, we see the Chaos Orb as a meteorite. And then the dawn of the sixth mass extinction. So pretty heavy, man. Pretty heavy stuff here for, for a magic tournament. But very thematic. But if we forget about the theme for a moment, this is also just a really, really good deck. Because, I mean, he's playing with four chains, four bolts, lots of burn. I mean, that alone is super strong. And then he's combining Living Plane with uh, Drop of Honey. And that is a really good combination. Because Drop of Honey is a card from Arabian Nights, one green to cast an enchantment that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy the creature with the least power. It cannot be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for the least power, you choose one of them. Now, this is vital that you choose one of them because what does Living Plane do? Living Plane turns all lands into 1-1 one, one creatures. So all of a sudden, these lands get destroyed by the drop of honey. And if you have a land and your opponent has a land and they're both 1-1s, one you get to choose which land you want to destroy. And obviously, you want to destroy the lands of your opponents first, right? So, I mean, Drop of Honey, Living Plane is a very strong combination on its own, right? Combined with all the burn. I mean, I'm not surprised to see this deck like in the finals, you know? I mean, I have to admit, all the cards fit the theme. So it's really, really cool. Beautiful deck photo. Also, the sideboard deck photo is really, really nice. So it all fits together. But again, I'm not surprised to see this deck doing so well. I mean, so much burn and then that living plane drop of honey combo. That is a lot of firepower here in the, in the day two tournament. So we're seeing a really cool thematic deck and also a strong deck here in the finals against the zombies for me sebastian is the clear favorite especially since those drop, drops of honey but there's simply only one way to find out and that is by just going to the finals who will win here at day two alliance day will it be sebastian with greta speech or maybe kevin with his zombie quest deck here we go Game number one of the finals of Lions Day is about to start and we've got two beautiful decks on the left. We've got Zombie Quest Mono Black Zombies taking on Greta's Speech, a red-green environmental deck that's filled with burn. So uh, let's see who gets to start here. The beverages are there, that's important. They're fighting over that lion altar there in the middle with the Venetia Lions logo. Pretty cool altar. There we see the hand. Ooh, Soul Ring. And we see Walking Dead. So, I mean, there's some, some pressure that, uh, that I guess Kevin can build up there from an early uh, get-go. There we see Mulligan. Sebastian here taking a mulligan. So, he's going to shuffle up. <laughs> so, not happy with his hand. Going to draw a fresh seven. We're playing according to the London mulligan rule, meaning you can look at seven cards again, and then you have to put one on the bottom if you decide to keep. So he's going to look at his hand. Let's see if he's going to keep this one. It looks like he, he is. So putting a card on the bottom. Ooh, there is again the drop of honey. That's going to be quite good. Also the maze. Got some burn desert. Also quite useful against the zombies. So this is looking like a very good hand. And we'll just have to wait and see who's on the play. There we see a Batland. So Sebastian is on the play here. Starting with that duel. And also a Batlands here from Kevin into Soul Ring. Probably going to pass the next next turn. He could play uh, the Walking Dead or perhaps another creature if he has it. There we see a forest and just a pass here. Of course, no need for Sebastian to play anything out. Going to tap two. And there is the Walking Dead. So 1-1 one, one Regenerator. Could decide to fire off that Lightning Bolt, but Sebastian decides not to. Has, of course, also the Drop of Honey and the Maze. So this is really a nice combination, of course, drop of honey and maze. You first play your maze, kind of force your opponent to play out more creatures, and then you play your, your, your drop of honey. Here we see an icy manipulator tapping down the maze. There we go. This means there's an opening. There's an attack. So the first point of damage is dealt here. That means Sebastian is going to drop to 19. Untapping uh, that maze. He still has to do that. Untap upkeep draw, of course, but I'm sure he's going to fix that later. There's the desert. 
So Desert, another good card against the Walking Dead, although Walking Dead, of course, has regeneration. So um, Kevin can basically do the same here, tap down the maze and attack for one and regenerate the Walking Dead if Sebastian decides to ping it. Okay, here we see a Dark Ritual. It looks like he's going to do something else. So three black in the pool. Tapping two, so five in total. What is he going to do for five? There's a Pestilence for four, so one black still floating. Could use that one black here to put in the IC and tap down the mace. Oh, look at that. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, yeah, so he's pinging for one with the Pestilence and then regenerating the Walking Dead. That's why we see a point of damage here for uh, Sebastian. So perhaps Sebastian is considering now doing something on end step. It's going to read the Pestilence as long as there are creatures on board, the Pestilence lives. When all the creatures are gone, so, uh, so, so is the Pestilence as well. So it needs to have a creature on the board or else it destroys itself at the end of the turn. There we see a Taiga. And remember, Sebastian still has that drop of honey, but you really don't just want to waste a drop of honey on just one creature because drop of honey also destroys itself when there are no creatures anymore. Oh, but we do see him doing it here, playing the drop of honey. So that means that next upkeep, next Sebastian's upkeep, that zombie, uh, walking dead zombie is going to die. But for now, he can use the Pestilence again, and he can regenerate the Walking Dead again. So it's going to take another point of damage. So he's going to drop here to 17, I believe. So 17 for Sebastian and 18 for Kevin. I mean, look at all that burn there on the hand. Of Sebastian could fire off the bolt now, because I'm assuming Kevin is doing this on end step. So could fire off the bolt, but then he loses the drop of honey as well, so decides not to. That means that Kevin can at least deal some more damage with the Pestilence uh, Walking Dead trick. Here we see um, a Howling Mine. And of course, that Howling Mine can be tapped down by the Icy Manipulator. That's exactly what... No, that's not what he does. I wouldn't say that's exactly what he does, but that's not what he does. I'm a little bit surprised. So he's going to allow Sebastian here to draw two cards. And uh, I guess he's going to use the Pestilence again here. And there we see the Drop of Honey destroying the zombie. And then uh, the Drop of Honey leaves play because there are no creatures anymore. And we do see in response Kevin using the Pestilence twice here. So I do believe the Walking Dead is now gone. Or am I missing something? Exactly, The Walking Dead should be gone. So Sebastian on 14, Kevin on 16. So Kevin trying to play it as aggressive as he can. Oh, look at that. There we've got a double chain. Yeah, now we've got the, uh, the burn plan in full effect, right? And he's got a lot of burn. He still has a bolt. I think he's got an earthquake in there as well. So that's at least seven more damage. Kevin on 10 already. There's another Walking Dead. Okay, that's something. Now he needs to tap down that Howling Mine. Oh, he's not gonna though. It's going to allow Sebastian to draw two more cards. That's really dangerous against that uh, burnt packed deck of Sebastian. I mean, he could still do it in the upkeep, I guess. Untap, upkeep, tap the mine. And then Sebastian only draws one. Look at that, another bolt. To the dome, so gonna drop to seven. There's another bolt there in hand, so he's just gonna burn Kevin out here and he's probably gonna take game one. And this is kind of uh, what was to be expected, of course, when we saw both the deck lists. I'm expecting to see a similar thing, uh, to be honest, here in, uh, in game number two. <laughs> Tapping down the mace here on end step, then we also see another bolt. He's gonna drop to four, it's probably over next turn. There's not much Kevin can do here. He can draw two cards at least. And that uh, drop of honey is going to kill that zombie during the upkeep of Sebastian. Not that it really matters that much. 
And I guess, I mean, if you're Kevin, at least you can uh, attack for one more point with the walk-in debt. That's something. It looks like he's got maybe some way to get cards back out of his graveyard. Maybe an anime debt, but there's really not a good target for it. Remember, anime debt gives uh, minus zero, minus one. Okay, making a 2-2 two -two here with the Batmoon. So at least dealing two points of damage. Sebastian dropping here to 12. But I do believe he's got that Earthquake in hand. And he can play an Earthquake for four, winning it next turn. Going to tap four. There's another Icy passing the turn. So again, two cards for Sebastian. Now we see, of course, the uh, Drop of Honey trigger. So walking that leaves play, so does the Drop of Honey because there are no more creatures on the board. It's going to draw two cards from the mine. And that's it, Earthquake winning it here. So game number one here going to Sebastian. And to be honest, I'm kind of expecting game two to be the same, but maybe I'm pessimistic. We will see. Anyway, these players are going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Kevin on the play, let's take a look at his hand. Okay, Howling Mine, is that a Pestilence, the card, Dark Ritual, and again, the Walking Dead. So, you know, it would be nice if that says Cave Zombies there. It could go Dark Ritual into Cave Zombies. That's pretty sweet. Here we see the hand. I, again, that Drop of Honey, Maze of If, that's going to stop it there. We see Drop of Honey, Living Plane. Also Sylvan, very strong hand here by uh, Sebastian. There's Dark Ritual. Into Howling Mine, taking a point for Mana Burn here. Dropping to 19. So Kevin is all about letting people draw cards here. I like it, Kevin. I think it's cool. So really going for that here. There's the Forest by Sebastian. Doesn't really have anything going for him at the start, right? This deck needs a little bit more time. Oh, and now he's got a discard, of course, because he drew two cards from the mine. Yeah, that's interesting. So this is a pretty nice Howling Mine, actually, by Kevin, if you look at it from that perspective. Like, he got two cards, and Sebastian had to discard a card. There's the Walking Dead that he found earlier. Are we going to see Escape Zombies turn three? That's what I'm personally really hoping for. Really like the Escape Zombies. And uh, I'm, I'm actually, I've got a zombie deck myself where I play Escape Zombies. It's really funny, because when you go turn one ritual, people expect an Hypnotic, and then you play the Escape Zombies. And that always uh, puts a smile on your opponent's face. Anyway, here we see the Sylvan. So a card from Legends. Allows you to look at the top three cards during your draw step. And then you can put them in any order. And if you want to get an extra card, you can do that. But you have to pay four life. And you can uh, draw two extra cards top. So that would set you back eight life. But it's a really good card. And it really allows you to get some uh, some extra draws going on if, you, uh, if you've got a green deck. So there we see another Swamp. There's the attack for one. So Sebastian dropping to 19. There is a Soaring tapping four. Are we going to see a Pestilence? Yeah, so it was a Pestilence in hand there. For a moment, I thought maybe it's a Scave Zombie, but it's a Pestilence. So passing the turn here to Sebastian, who's also going to draw two cards again. Well, one card first, then look at the top three, I guess. There he goes. Okay, so what a luxury here. For Sebastian, there's a uh, drop of honey. Yeah, and that drop of honey, uh, it's really a big problem. It's not as good here. I'm a little bit surprised that Sebastian is uh, playing it out, probably because he doesn't want to discard. Could have gone just for uh, for maze and pass. Here we see a demonic tutor. Okay, so I wonder if he's got anything against his drop of honey. I mean, what are his weapons of choice here? Because, I mean, he's in Mono Black. He doesn't play Nevenerals Disc, I believe. So it's going to be really tough for him just to deal with this Drop of Honey. What he could also think is the Drop of, of Honey is going to disappear next turn anyway. So he can kind of choose another card. Icy could be interesting because he could tap down his own Maze. Uh, sorry, his own Howling Mine. And, of course, tap down the Maze with an Icy as well, maybe later in the game. Oh, he went for Drain Life. Okay. I'm liking it that you're showing it to us, Kevin. So went for Drain Life. That can be a very good card later on, but first you have got, you have got to get him low enough. He's going to use the Pestilence here, I guess, for two. And then he's going to lose the Pestilence, and also the Drop of Honey is going to go. 
And again, uh, Sebastian here able to look at the top three cards with the Sylvan. After drawing the extra card from the mind, then look at the top three, put it in order. Put it back here. I mean, the thing is, Sebastian doesn't have any pressure. He's playing creatureless. Uh, but yeah, he's got that burn plan, of course. There's the desert. I mean, look at that hand. I mean, he's got two disintegrates, I believe. I think I saw Titania's song. He's got a regrowth. Basically, all his red cards are burned there. So I see like three or four red cards in there. So that's a lot of burn. Another swamp here for Kevin. Now remember, those swamps only make his drain life a lot better. And I'm kind of liking this, this drain life plan because you know this game is probably going to take a little bit longer because Sebastian wants to play Expel. So, you know, you've got a little bit of time. And of course, drain life also gives you life, which works really well against burn. And again, Sebastian, he's going to look at the cards. Yeah, I kind of feel like this, this Howling Mine is really helping his plan, you know, because he can just select all the burn in hand and just discard the rest. Can start playing, uh, shooting off those, uh, those bolts, perhaps, or chain lightnings, although we haven't seen a single one yet. So he's going to tap out here. There's Titania's song. Interesting. So that means the Soul Ring is now a 1-1. One, one. The Howling Mine is a 2-2. Two, two. It also means that they lose all of their abilities, so it no longer gives that extra card. But now Kevin can at least attack with both, deal a little bit of damage. Probably just one. But hey, every point counts. He would put Sebastian on 16. Going to tap two more. What are we going to see? There's a Walking Dead attacking with both of the artifacts here. So going to send back the mine, I guess. Going to take one, drop to 16. And yeah, he stepped out with the desert, so cannot kill it with that ping. So that's a plus. Now remember, desert uh, deals the damage after you've taken the damage from the attacking creature. <laughs> and Kevin, you're passing your turn, so he's got three lands untapped. We, we do know that one of those cards, right, is the drain life. And now, of course, only one card because of the Titania song. Oh, look at this. So he's making a mistake here. Exactly. You should only look at the top three. And Kevin is pointing it out. Now, remember, this is like a super casual tournament. So, you know, we're all fine with this. It was a really, really fun day. You can, If you go on Facebook, by the way, and you can join the Venetia Alliance or at least have a look at the decks. I'll put a link to their Facebook page uh, in the description of the video and also a link to their Instagram. They're also present on Instagram where you can see the decks that uh, were in the tournament. There were some really, really cool ones. Including, of course, the boat deck that I played against last week. That was just a lot of fun. So he could go in for the Chain Lightning, right? And he can uh, heal three to the face. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. Or maybe, I mean, if he doesn't have lands in hand, could go for that land. I mean, he's got two disintegrates, I believe, in hand. So the more lands he plays out, the better, you know, those disintegrates get. So there's really not a concern here for Sebastian. The thing is, though, with the Chain Lightning, now that I'm looking at it, um, Kevin, of course, does have two red with those two bad lands who could send the Chain Lightning back. That's kind of funny. So here we see a Hammerheim. Could take away a landwalk ability that could be relevant. <laughs> you know, once uh, Kevin has a zombie master in play and, and some kind of way to give Sebastian zombies, I guess. Uh, sorry, swamps, I guess. Anyway, here we see. Yeah, there's an earthquake for four, tapping out. Now, of course, Kevin can regenerate his walking dead, but the problem here is the damage that he's gonna take, so four damage. Oh, and of course, his artifacts are gonna die because they're creatures because of the Titania song. Oh, that's actually pretty cool now that I think about it. That combination, Titania Song with Earthquake. It's a neat little way to get rid of artifacts. That is pretty cool tech. There's the attack. There's, of course, the maze activation. But hey, you got to try. Why not? Tapping four. What are we going to see? Pestilence again. So we really see these decks kind of doing the same thing, right? We see Kevin with the Pestilence plan. And then we see uh, Sebastian with the much more efficient burn plan. And that's kind of the story here of the finals. 
But actually, the real story is that we really had a fun day. I really enjoyed this. Like we had the day one was more the serious decks and day, day two was the theme decks. So, of course, personally, I enjoyed day two a lot more. Here we see a chain lightning and a lightning bolt. Wow, look at that. So that means four, seven points of damage here. Dealt to Sebastian, gonna drop to six. That also means that, of course, his pestilence plan <laughs> is not very good. Now, do remember, he has that one drain life. That's the only hope that we can cling on. Because, of course, we want to see a game three, but it's going to be really tough. There's the attack first. May sending it back. Could go for a drain life for three. Yeah, that's what he does. That's not great. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do. At least then you're putting Sebastian also on nine. So both players on nine at the moment. But I do believe there's more burn in hand there for Sebastian. Going to look at the top three. Do some card selection again. There's a hurricane in hand there as well. I mean, that pestilence was super good when he played it against me. That was the that was the way he won the game, you know. Um, also because I didn't have any enchantment removal in my deck. And here we see a regrowth. Ay ay ay! Getting back the chain lightning, dealing three more points of damage. He's gonna drop to six. There's a drop of honey. That's gonna take care of the Walking Dead and. I guess next turn he could play a Disintegrate for six. He's got enough mana. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're very close to the finish line here at uh, day two, the Lions Day. And, I mean, Kevin needs a miracle if he wants to make it 1-1 here. I really don't see it happen, but who knows? He's on six, Sebastian on nine. Does have an anime dead in hand, which is not really useful. There's another Walking Dead. Gonna tap two more. There's an anime dead, beautifully signed by Anson Maddox, but why not three walking dead on the battlefield? I love it, my man. I really like it. It's not gonna give you the victory, but that is, of course, style points for you. And then the creature with the lowest power is going to die, which is going to be the walking dead, of course, with the anime dead on it. So that alone was worth playing that anime dead, actually. I didn't think about that, but it's quite an interesting little uh, little situation we got there and now of course Sebastian can play that huge disintegrate which I think he has in hand we'll see gonna tap oh there's a desert twister and a look at this dark ritual in response this is kind of funny dealing one point of damage in response uh, with the pestilence still regenerating his walking dead <laughs> Oh, that is really, really funny. So we had Justin and Kira over here in Italy from the Desert Twisters from Arizona. So that's also why Sebastian really enjoyed playing a Desert Twister the entire day. But yeah, this is at least one extra turn. I mean, he can deal one more point of damage. And actually, you know, look at it. He got him all the way down to five. That is quite impressive. Four even. He's not even going to use the mace. I'm surprised. Can he find a way to win it? No, there's an Icy. Passing the turn. And yeah, I guess the Walking Dead is going to die by that tough point of damage dealt by the desert. Hello. Hey, you're back. There is another maze. So I guess that one card in hand is not a Disintegrate, or else he would have played it out already, I assume. So just one card in hand, or is it two cards? I believe it's just one. So both players, actually Sebastian on four, <laughs> Kevin on five. Uh, Kevin needs a little bit more mana. I mean, I'm sure he's got another drain life in the deck, right? Trying to remember the deck photo here. I mean, if he does, he can hope to get that other drain life, maybe get a dark ritual as well, you know, and then he can, you know, maybe win it here in game, uh, in game two. Who knows? I mean, Sebastian's on four. But both players seem to, uh, to have a drink here, talk about life, but I'm curious to see. Three cards in hand for Kevin, one card in hand for Sebastian. And we see Sebastian here sorting his lands a little bit. 
For a moment there, I thought maybe he's going to tap out, take the win, but I guess he, he he never had those double disintegrates in hand that I thought he did. Maybe it was that, that earthquake and not a red card. Because this, then that last card could be Hurricane, which he cannot play because he's on four. He could go for a draw, I guess, but why would you? Is he going to go? Oh, he's going to go. Yeah, he's going to go for a draw here. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that coming. He's going to go for the draw. So that means that both players are, uh, are now going to play another round, right? Of course they do. Anyway, they're going to shuffle up. So we've got a draw on our hands, I guess. I really didn't see that coming. So yeah, um, game two is a draw. So I guess we're going to go to game three. Game number three, here we go. So uh, there's a draw, and there's a win for Sebastian. Who's going to start? Anyway, there's a mulligan by Kevin. I guess Kevin's going to start. That's a funny coaster, yeah. Land Equilibrium as a coaster. <laughs> anyway, there's a uh, swamp here. Forest for Sebastian. So both players just playing a land turn one. Didn't show their hands, so we don't know. There's a Walking Dead again. There's a lot of Walking Deads in this game. Again, that maze. Oh, that must be so annoying for Kevin. There's the attack, of course, sending it back with the maze. Can he put some more pressure on? Hey, there's Escape Zombies, finally. So happy to see the Escape Zombies. 2-2 two, two, Vanilla. There we see the desert. So a desert, a forest, and a maze. Tapping a green. There's again the drop of honey. Of course, gonna attack with two, right? Yeah, and he can use the desert. Oh, look at that. He's, yeah, he's gonna send back this cave, gonna use the desert. He could regenerate it for one, deciding not to. Interesting. Does it mean that he's got a better option? There's a howling mine. So draw to play out the howling mine. Still had that one black open, though. But it's deciding to go this path and that way destroying the drop of honey. And then he can start rebuilding again. That kind of makes sense. Like the only way to get rid of the drop of honey is just making sure you've got no more creatures on board. Because remember, Kevin is playing mono black, so doesn't have access to a card like Disenchant or Tranquility. There is a uh, Soaring hitting the board. Dark Ritual, three black, four black in the pool. What are you going to see for four black? Six even. Oh, double scape zombies. Now that is cool. That is the first I'm seeing somebody cast a double scape zombies. I love it. Both two twos. And next turn, you can actually start dealing some damage. No, Earthquake. Earthquake. That's the thing. Like, Sebastian's deck is so good against creature heavy builds, right? With all that removal. So 16 for Sebastian, 17 for Kevin. Kevin playing here the uh, the Icy. Was, of course, hoping in this turn to play out the Icy. Tap down the maze. And yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to see that Kevin is not tapping his own Howling Mind. Maybe that's part of his philosophy. He just wants his opponent to also draw cards. Remember, this is, of course, the, the, the theme day and the flavor day. So it's kind of, it, it, it fits the spirit of this day to let your opponent also draw extra cards. But this Titania song is actually quite good for Kevin. Look at him go now. Can deal three points of damage. All those artifacts are now artifact creatures, vanilla creatures. A 2-2, two, two, a 4-4, four, four, and a 1-1. One, one. I'm expecting maybe another Earthquake here to wipe the board. There is a forest. If I lose my left option, I'm going to call you. Yeah, expecting an Earthquake here, or... Why would he... Uh, yeah, there's the Earthquake for four, exactly. Or else he wouldn't have played out the Titania song, so... But, I mean, look at his life total. It's going to drop to nine. And Kevin on 13. Passing the turn, not really finding anything to put extra pressure on. And, I mean, these Earthquakes have been so good for Sebastian in this uh, game number three. There's another desert. And look at that, he's thinking like, oh, I don't want to play a Chain Lightning, because if I do, he can send it back. He's got two red there with the Badlands. Passing the turn here. Ooh, Terror Paralyze. Oh, that's worthless. 
Maybe it's nice to note, by the way, and you've probably seen that in the deck text that Kevin doesn't have a sideboard. So, I mean, the Terror is useless, but he cannot board it out. So he's got Terror and Paralyze, which are dead cards. He's got the Ritual, which could be good, for example, when he draws into a Drain. Here we see some action with the uh, Chain Lightnings. So Sebastian on six, Kevin on seven. Tapping two more. There's the Chaos Orb. There's a tap. <laughs> it's quite funny. Oh, of course the Chaos Orb is a 2-2 Vanilla. Oh, that is so cool. So you can tap it down now with the Paralyze. Oh, man, it took a moment for me to realize. I'm like, why is he playing the Paralyze on the Chaos Orb? But, of course, it's a 2-2 Vanilla with Titania Song. And this is actually quite cool because Sebastian can, if he wants to untap and deal two more damage and try to kill Kevin with the Chaos Orb. That would be pretty epic. I think he should go for it exactly, untap that baby and start attacking with it. The crazy orb of yours. There's another mace. So he can now attack and untap it with the mace after it's dealt damage. That's exactly what he does here. Wow, 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 style points. Don't burn him out. Don't burn him out. You got to win this now with your Chaos Orb. That's the way to go, in my opinion. He's on five, so that does mean that he needs three more turns. There's the pass. He could also play the Hurricane for three and then, make, then win it with the, with the Orb, but... Ah, he's doing it the other way. Ah, man. I think he should have done it first. Let me know what it comes. I think first do Hurricane for three, then win it with your, with your Chaos Orb. That would be quite epic. Anyway, uh, Sebastian, man, you've got the better deck. That's for sure. You're winning it here. And uh, what a nice player by both players. Thank you so much for bringing your decks to the table and uh, for showing your decks in action here in the finals at Alliance Day. And, of course, thank you also very much for watching another episode here of Timmy Talks. This was the last episode for now from the Prosecco Cup. I just wanted to say that I had a lot of fun. And here we can see a picture of both of the players. And uh, it was just, it was, it was such a good day. You know, there was so much more happening than just playing Magic. It was just all about the gathering and enjoying just really cool cards, fun synergies, and just, you know, talk about life, having a good time. And I can, I, yeah, I can just say the Prosecco Cup, what a great atmosphere. Again, thank you very much uh, for having me over there. I'm already looking forward to next year. And if I can make it, I'm definitely gonna come for the Prosecco Cup 2025. For now, thank you very much for watching. And uh, before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And uh, then, of course, there's another thing you can do talking about moving forward. You can also become a patron of the show. So if you like the content that I make, if you want to support me traveling to all these tournaments and making this content for you, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the info. And the cool thing is, if you become a patron of the show, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.